Hello everyone, back to tuning into today's only video. I'm going to have a look at the weather for the state of 14 days for today's only video. So day 10 will take us to the 10th of August and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with its CFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe by two of weeks, we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next uh, four weeks and I should get over that for you in a moment just to say that i'm back in the land of believing so uh the cold is finally lifting and uh, i've been to the optician today to have my eyes checked and like the burst blood vessel is only superficial so it should settle down on its own so uh gab is recovering but thank you all for your lovely messages of kindness and concern it does mean a great deal i have read all of them if i if, even if i haven't replied to them i've been generally trying to stay uh, offline and, and uh, limit my screen time uh, but we are beginning to get things back on track now everyone so thank you so much for all of your lovely messages and whatnot thank you so much everyone <coughs> So sorry, everyone. Right, going to start off the latest wind from Matt from Earth, nullschool.net, showing that the Azores High is heading our way from off the Atlantic, moving in from uh, the west. Central England temperature is currently sitting at 18.4, about 2.4 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average, and that's provisional to the 29th of July. It will be an 18 Celsius CT July. The only question is exactly where we land with that. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks, we're at London today. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off around to actually slightly below average the upper air temperatures at the moment. But we will see them lifting up as we go towards the end of the first week of August. Um, you'll notice that the uh, GFS uh, Midnight Operation, where Miss Vic Green Line lifts up quite a lot. So uh, that is, uh, well, not an outlier, but it is one of the hotter ensemble members, really, in the extended range. Ensemble Ministry of the White Line is much closer to the third year average. So a bit of uncertainty about how warm, how hot it's going to get from the first week into the second week up above precipitation-wise. So further showery bursts to come. Over the next few days, there is a drain tremor as we move on further through the first week and into the second week of August. Temperature anomaly is for the next uh, five days, so the 5th of August coming out around, so it's a slightly below average. 10 to 14 day, though, is uh, again close to average, a little bit above in the south, not a big deviation. Remember, that's based on the uh, GFS on songs, or GFS rather than um, uh, the operational run. Um, precipitation uh, anomaly is next seven days, the so 7th of August, generally a little bit on the drier. An average side, the uh, 10 to 16 day significantly driving average. So a drier and warming trend, really, as we're moving further into August. Right, let's start going for chart data. Then, Miss Abel, latest UK bet Euro run, talking big night on Sunday. Our low pressure is around ice and high pressure. <coughs> Excuse me, high pressure down towards the source and bring in a westerly flow. Now, this low deepens like mad uh, from Sunday to Monday. So, check this out. That looks, well, that wouldn't look out of place in October, would it? So, a bit of an autumnal style um, storm there, a summer storm coming in uh, at the beginning of next year. That might be a little bit over top. We'll go through the model output in a moment. I'm not sure there's that many other models going quite as deep as that low, but it does look very strong. It'll bring gales or even severe gales to the northern half of the country as well. Probably quite a lot of rain. And then high pressure back in through the second half next week. So that gets next Thursday when it's settling down and turning warmer again. Icon again brings in that low. Not quite as deep and intense with it. A bit further north as well early next week. But still bringing a blow to the north. Then uh, the Azores High trying to get back in. Uh, but not really doing so to the same degree as the uh, UK Met did with that. The KMA again brings out low through the country during the early part of next week. Properly wet and windy. Moves off into Scandinavia. High pressure then bridging into the south and strengthening as we move up towards day 10 and beyond it. So uh, by the time you're through to the 12th of August, some of that big time after that autumnal storm is uh, turning dry and hot there. 
This uh, is running really quite a bit. Um, 2020, summer of 2020, well, spring and summer 2020, I guess. August 2020, bit of a 2020 ring ducks, minus the lockdown, <laughs> of course. Um, this is how the GFS is looking, not as intense with that area of low pressure. We're still bringing some wet wind weather into the north. Then high pressure builds over to the east coast. We draw up that southerly flow and we draw up some very hot air for south plus 20 Celsius iceberg surging northwards. Um, Remember, that's a bit of an outlier with the GFS ensembles. High pressure bends sort of sits just the southwest. It's after a bit cooler and a bit more uh, showery by the middle part of the month. Again, bringing that low pressure in early next week. Uh, not as intense as the UK met, but still bring wet, windy weather to the north. And then high pressure builds over to the east of the country. Not quite as hot, though, with the upper air temperatures. And in the extended up to day 10 and beyond it, high pressure uh, builds and brings some dry and warm weather for a while before it turns a little bit more cooler and showery uh, towards the middle part of August. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all my videos and content. Don't forget to tell friends about guys with and get them to subscribe to Thanks so much everyone for doing that. About 50 subscribers will get us to 19.5k. Thank you so much everyone. GM again with high pressure to the south and to the southwest um, on Monday, middle of next week. A bit later uh, with that low, but does bring it in, should say early next week. So it turns wet, windy, stormy for the north. Um, a proper blow bear with the gem for the north. Uh, and then we're uh, seeing high pressure trying to extend in from off the Atlantic there. And then the east gem <coughs> rounds it all off with low pressure again coming through the country. Not quite as intensive that low, but still bringing quite a bit of wet and windy weather, especially to the north through the early part of next week. Then high pressure sitting just to the south. Late next week, low pressure is up to the north. We drag up some quite hot air for the south, but get a thundery low going around day 9 and 10, plus 15 cells iceberg is to the southeast of the country. And then in the extended, uh, where again we're into that, into that north south split, high pressure south, low pressure to the north. That brings quite a lot of dry and warm weather into the south, but the north could be a little bit showery. This is a precipitation forecast, but it's on my ECM run from Tibetio.com. So uh, it can be quite a bit of dry weather until the uh, weekend, and then we start bringing some rain in from off the Atlantic. There's that low, bringing wet and windy weather for the early part of uh, next week. Could see some, you know, really strong winds up in the north with that in particular. So I wouldn't be surprised if we've got 60, 70 bar now August, man, with the trees in full leaf. That could cause, um, you know, a, a few problems, actually. Going to have to keep an eye on that, though, and see how deep it gets in the end. A drying trend may be up to a day 10 of with thundery showers in the north. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Oh, so my line went wonky. <laughs> Gets it to the 10th of August. 13 members of the ECM ensembles, high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west, bring up a very warm southerly wind. And then we've got 19 with low pressure around Iceland, high pressure down towards France, and winds are coming in from the west then. And then in two weeks' time. <coughs> These are the options that we've got. Getting us to the 15th of August. 18 members of the ECM on some high pressure through the northwest. You have a lot of dry, very warm weather. 17 with some sort of upper level trough through the west of Europe. And then 16, low pressure to the northeast, high pressure to the west. And bring the wind in from the west or northwesterly uh, direction there. So a uh, range of options are two weeks out, as we typically see. Um, but out to 10 days out, probably an anti-cyclonic signal, really. And then the CFSB2, these are 500 millibar high dominance are broken down to week periods. The first week period takes us from the 30th of July to 5th of August. Next week, high pressure just to west-southwest, bringing the wind from off the Atlantic in a westerly direction. Week 2 will be the 6th through to the 12th of August. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Again, looking rather flat and westerly. Week 3 will be <coughs> the 13th to the 19th of August. High pressure more or less. So, top of the country round, it's dry and warm weather. And then uh, week four, rounding it all off, it's the 20th to 26th of August. High pressure in the Atlantic, a trough over Scandinavia, and winds coming in from a westerly direction or a northwesterly direction. So, uh, a lot of dry weather without a lot of anticyclonic weather. Um, not necessarily overly hot a lot of the time, though.
We'll see. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much so for, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. There he is. <laughs> don't forget to squint up the screen. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends about cars well busy and get them to subscribe to. Thanks so much so for doing that. Tomorrow, we're going to have a 6 MUK weather forecast. 10 to 14 down. I won't try to squeeze in Jeremy Friday. I'm going to gradually increase the, um, the vid. So maybe not Jeremy Friday tomorrow. Maybe just 6 AM and 10 to 14 down. But anyway, watch this space and uh, it will all be revealed. For this one, though, that's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday and thanks for watching.